appreciate it. I got so many great friends of mine that love your show every day, listen to it all the time. And a, a girl named Dolores wants to know if Spike's married. She wanted his she wanted his cell phone number. Twenty two, <laughs> dude. Twenty two years, nine of them happily. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I got I got twenty seven years under my belt anyway. But you know what? We got a lot of these. Uh, all right. Hey, by the way, our producer will give you the cell phone number off the air. We can't do that thing on the public phone. Tell Dolores to text him. Yeah, Dolores. That's a such a hot name too. Hey, uh, Eddie. Uh, so you're coming here. Uh, when do you arrive? I'm actually going to come at Dave's show, and uh, I'm actually my drummer. Uh, he had a sciatic nerve. I guess everybody's getting all the sciatic nerve problem. So I have to drum up from the Jim Blossoms play with me, but he's a good kid. Of course, he's in his 35, he's 35 years old, and I call him a good kid, you know? Right, of course. But yeah, bands sound great. We opened up with uh, Baby Little Don. We got sick. You know, I did have about 12 songs in the top 100. I was Baby looking, and by the way, I was looking at that, and, you know, I, this whole Two Tickets to Paradise, is that like your American Pie? Are you sick of that song? You know what? When I see, you know, we just finished doing the Geico commercial, which, you know, was up for commercial of the year, and, uh, you know, you get a lot of fans out there, and everybody's got cell phones with cameras in it. And I don't want people to meet me and go, and I met Eddie Money. Well, he didn't take a picture. So, I mean, it's really great to be recognized. But taking on tonight is and, and, and shaking and to fix the paradise. And, of course, if you don't to walk on water and they flip out. I mean, we've got a lot of... you got a lot of, a lot of songs. Are, are, if, uh, two Tickets to Paradise is the, mo- is the one that keeps showing up as checks in your mailbox, though, from advertising and all that, right? Well, I'd have to ask my wife about that. I, I never see the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, back, Man after our own back heart. Yes. When, when that was released, Eddie, I think the record company's mantra was you get 2% of whatever you do. I mean, the record company keeps a lot of the money. I I would guess that the Geico commercial probably put a, a pays bu- you more than the record. Well, you know what, guys? I, I'm not making a lot of money. And I'm, I'm, I, the thing is, is, you know, I'm in that upper tax bracket. And I'm not like IBM or Steve Wozniak. I don't have a lot of write-offs. You know, this is the greatest company in the world. But, you know, I mean, I, I'm like every year. How many rock stars, you know, shop with double coupons, guys? He I shops. got five kids. <laughs> They're going to be rock stars. You know, you know it's, things are good. I'm, right. I'm having a good day. It's good, but hey, but let's say this. Won't you help? Eddie Money will be at Snoqualmie <laughs> Casino this Sunday night. Won't you help? His Seriously. wife is clipping coupons. He's got five kids. He's got a uh, Geico lizards that can't get out of the house. It's a bit. It's a bit very tough. Very tough. Uh, by the way, uh, two tickets to paradise. Take me home tonight, baby. Hold on. Shaken. I want to talk about some of these other songs. Think I'm in love. Um, maybe I'm a fool. Uh, I rem- I played every one of these as a DJ. Walk on water. Big, right, big songs. What's your yeah, songwriting have, uh, secret? I, you know, I sold twenty-seven million records, Bob. I, I should have saved the money. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> when you know, you got to write songs yeah. about what people want, like "Take Me Home Tonight" and uh, "Baby Hold On to Me." You know, I remember back in uh, you know, I saw a shrink once, and he said to me, "All my songs represent the American male inadequacies." I said, oh, isn't that nice? But, you know. (laughs) Your shrink actually, your shrink critiqued your lyrics? Can you believe that? (laughs) Everybody's got a shrink. No, I didn't, I stopped seeing the shrink. I only had seen the shrink after I got a DUI. That was years ago. Ah, many years ago. Now, yeah, talk a little bit about that, because you're you're public about that. It's part of your story. Uh, You had, you had hits, you had success. And then, like many, like many rock stars, the excesses of partying and all of that started to uh, get to the point where you yeah. know you you were you weren't feeling good. Did you see it coming? And what was the turning point for you? No, well, man. I'll tell you the truth. You know, you think you're invisible, and the thing is, is you never get too loaded because you know you're working. You got Bill Graham as a manager, and he's in the rock. He's like a rock and sorry on the Hall of Fame. He managed Grateful Dead. He managed Janis Joplin. Make a long story short. You know, it's like a lightning bolt came down, and I just was drinking a lot of vodka and and snorted the wrong stuff and and went into the semi-catatonic state and blew out my leg. You know, I couldn't walk for you. But then again, on the other hand, I quit getting loaded, and I came back and I wrote my biggest record, No Control. So, you know, you got to take the good with the bad, you know? Right. Did you have a situation, like, I've I've, I've been to a show where a a rock star, I'm not going to mention his name, but he literally vomited in the middle of the show. Was and that it Gordon was, Lightfoot? It was no, <laughs> no names. But no names. but I'm saying, and then then and then after that he went into. And it, did you have a, a situation? Because that's but you have the pride in your work where you couldn't do your work. Yeah, I mean, it's my shows to me going out there. 
and sounding like the wreck and, and people, you know, getting all lit up. But I got to tell you, I quit drinking about, you know, it'll be four years in March. And not that I ever got drunk on stage like uh, Jim Morrison or Janis Joplin, but, you know, to see these people, to see people six years old because of the internet and stuff, knowing the lyrics to, like, think I'm in love and I, I can bring a little kid up on stage and I'll know the second verse to take me off tonight. And what I think is, is I quit drinking and about you know, six months ago, I did a show and I was playing with my audience and said, geez, I'm sorry I drank that quarter vodka. I'll try to give you a good show. Next thing you know, it's all over YouTube. And my mother was crying, oh, Eddie's back. I go, what is everybody talking about? <laughs> it was a joke. I'll... Sitting around, you know, mm. that, you know, I'm sorry I drank that quarter vodka, you know. I'll say something stupid like, you know, I want to thank my, prob my probation officer for coming down tonight. No, I'm giving away all my material. Stop it, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, this is some of your show. <laughs> well, well you're, so you have fun with it. I got to say something I got to say something else. I was reading about you for this interview, and... Uh, you know, there's a lot about you online. One of the things, though, that uh, people should know is your reputation for putting on a show that sounds fantastic, that is, uh, that is the hits played beautifully, and that really people will, that it'll, be a, it'll be a nostalgia for them because it's presented so well. So you really, you, you don't just go out there and, and you know, sort of play the songs. You, you, you're a very tight band. Well, you know what? We uh, we people we light a lot of people up, and you know we have to work also. Uh, I do everything I can. You know, a lot of these kids are born HIV positive. They never had promiscuous sex with anybody or suck a dirty in a needle. In a, and I'm going with this devastating thing. So we're out there after work, and I'm selling T-shirts. And my T-shirts are ninety dollars worth of them. So it's twenty, thirty dollars. Helps the kids out with these kids born HIV positive. Right. And we got a song called One More Soldier coming home. And a lot of the money goes to the Intrepid Fall and Hero Fund Park, which is a nonprofit charitable organization with two facilities for these kids coming back from Afghanistan with these head trauma injuries. So, you know, if you get out there, you know. Yeah. It's, it's sort of neat with your name that you're not all about the money. Yeah, you know what? I'll tell you the truth. The money, I've had a lot of money. I blew a lot of money. I mean, I'm always feeling like the kids aren't in the rehab or on probation. I'm, I'm having a good month. <laughs> ah, parents. Now, <laughs> now that you that you don't drink or do any drugs, Eddie, what what is your kind of guilty pleasure? What do you enjoy when you're off stage or sitting at home watching TV or something? Well, I'll tell you the truth. My wife hates it. My big vice is tobacco. I mean, I'm still smoking a uh, half a pack of cigarettes a day, and then I'm on, then I take the nicotine gum. But I didn't take the Nicorette gum this morning. I'd have a cigarette because the Nicorette gum gives you the hiccups. Huh. And I didn't want to get on the Bob River show going, oh, I just is that's Eddie. That's like, right. So, wow. I got to quit smoking, and I love playing golf. I'm not that good. You know, I mean, the, the, the doctor's telling me uh, I'm pre-diabetic. Who isn't pre-diabetic? Who isn't pre-diabetic? We're all born pre-diabetic. <laughs> so We're not diabetic yet. That's a pre-diabetic boy. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> uh, you know, won't you bring your child down so Eddie Money can hold your child? Seriously. There's Sunday night at 7 o'clock at Suquamie <laughs> Casino. Uh, Eddie, uh, it is a truly a pleasure. I want to come down and see you Sunday night. I look forward to maybe meet well, you backstage. I really appreciate that. And i got to tell you, Clearwater and KJR has always been in my corner for a long time. And it's just going to be a, a lot of fun show. And I, I want to, somebody named Dolores and, and uh, Bobby V and uh, Tommy, actually uh, Tommy Terrero, wanted to, wanted to give you a shout out so I told them, you know they're you know they live up there and if I didn't do it they would drive me crazy for the next three weeks you know no problem they wanted their five something to fame so yeah. I gave him a shout out you know hey if Eddie just a thought Tom, you got a big show for Christ's sake everybody wants to get on the air yeah I just a thought just occurred to me if you stop smoking will that ruin your voice you know I quit smoking I remember when Bob Dylan quit smoking and all of a sudden his voice didn't sound like the Bob Dylan voice that's right but you know, my voice is just naturally raspy from singing for so many years that I don't think it's going to really affect my voice. Well, I just don't want to. I just don't want to come to one of your shows after you quit smoking and, and Justin Bieber is singing. Uh, you know, ah! Her bits were shaken. I don't think that'll be good. So I, that kid's in a lot of trouble. He, you know, he's going to have to turn around and get himself kick himself in the butt. You know, you know, you know, things can fall apart. I don't understand. They're trying to maybe throw the kid out of the country and not. Yeah. You're the kind you of know, guy who you know, could tell you him could, a couple things. You could mentor him before he blows all his money. He'd be like my kids. Nobody listens to me. Come on. <laughs> That's about right. That's all right. 
Eddie Money in Northern California this morning. And uh, the show, uh, do come and see it. I'm going to be there. It's Sunday, Snoqualmie Casino, 7 p.m., rock legend, Eddie Money. Eddie, it's always great to talk to you. Bobby, thanks so much. My best KGR, and thanks for having me on the air.